Сьогодні в ефірі програми «Форум ТВ» буде ще одна дуже надихаюча історія. Ми сьогодні у містечку Гелф, що неподалік від Торонто, і розкажемо вам історію засновника та директора компанії «Денбі», звати його Джиме Стіл, який допомагає від початку повномасштабного вторгнення українським громадянам, які рятуються від війни, обирають Канаду своїм домом, допомагає їм будувати нове життя тут, в Канаді. Зараз розкажемо усі деталі. Джим Естіл – канадський підприємець у сфері технологій, керівник та філандроп, який з 2015 року обіймає посаду президента та генерального директора компанії з виробництва побутової техніки «Денбі Аплайнсес». Від початку повномасштабного вторгнення Росії в Україну Джим Естіл організував в місті Гуелф волонтерський проєкт з допомогою українцям з роботою, житлом та налагодженням нового життя в Канаді. Джим, я дуже радий бути тут і я дуже радий, щоб зустрітися з вами, бо ви маєте дуже велику історію розповідати. Дякую, і я радий бути тут, і ви українці дуже добре. Okay, thank you very much, Jim. So yeah, um, I would love to um, start with the um, another story because I know that in 2015 you started helping Syrian refugees who were also like fleeing the war and seeking a better life here in Canada. So you put up 1.5 million to bring 58 Syrian refugee families to Canada. You found houses, gave them jobs, and even bought one man at dollar store, right? So tell me just a little of this story. How did you feel to, to start helping them? So I saw what was happening mm -hmm. in the world and, and I said, well, what can I do? And I said, oh, we have a private refugee sponsorship program. I could bring in refugees. So. Um, I just did my charity budget and said, okay, I can afford to bring in this many people. And when you, you don't just write a check for this, you have to settle people well. So we set up a system where every family has four mentor families and they have checklists of meet them at the airport, find an apartment, get it furnished, get the housewares, register the kids in school, set up a bank account, get a doctor, get a dentist, all the stuff you do when you land and I know you immigrated and you probably didn't have that support Absolutely. network to say here's a no, here, here's a no. map of where you are and here's a bus pass and we'll ride the bus to show you I where wish you go. I had but I didn't. <laughs> That's right and because I did that I sort of mm -hmm. became the poster child of refugee and so we've settled uh, well over we've helped like low thousands but well, well over um, 500 uh, people to settle in Canada. And so we started with Syrian, but we've switched and done a lot more Ukrainian, or a lot more um, uh, Afghan, and of course, we're helping Ukrainians who aren't technically refugees, and the main thing we're doing with them is the furniture bank. We're supplying furniture and housewares. Okay, perfect. We will go there today also and uh, see what's going on there, but let's switch to like Ukrainian story. So how did it start it personally for you? So did you watch the news and you watched like the, the war in Ukraine, the full scale invasion started, so and you were thinking, could I help these people or what were your thoughts at that time? Well, of course, I you're deeply troubled. What, what can you do? And we actually had some systems and process to help people land and so um, we talked to the Ukrainian church and mm -hmm. uh, said you know and, and then they started sending people and referring pe people to us um, they actually uh, collected a lot of stuff and we actually shipped a container mostly of medical supplies um, didn't ship it to the Ukraine we shipped it to Poland to mm -hmm. get it to Ukraine um, but we found that the shipping costs were outrageous and it was very difficult to do so we only did one container but we've been supporting mostly with the furniture bank is what we're doing but we help people to settle in canada perfect and that's really wonderful that here in gulf we have a ukrainian community and people are coming and finding their new homes here so could you please just tell me a little of ukrainian community living here in gulf did you know that people uh so how did you feel about that ukrainian community here in gulf well the Ukrainian community in Guelph has been here for decades, and it's no different than any of the other. It, it's sort of like your Ukrainian Canadian, or your Italian Canadian, or your German Canadian, or your. Um, so it's like all of those. There's a very um, large Ukrainian church, um, which I'm certainly familiar with, but it, it's just another person. You don't. It, it's no different than any other person, if you know what I mean. Absolutely, yeah. 
Okay, perfect. So um, I would love to ask one more question regarding the Ukrainian newcomers like coming here to Canada in the last two years. So what were the difficulties um, helping them? Because we were talking just uh, five minutes ago that uh, at the beginning of the QED program, that's Ukrainian emergency program like to emigrate to Canada, uh, the Ukrainians coming here to Canada, they didn't have like a medical coverage, so they didn't have, they didn't ha have a medical insurance. So what were the other difficulties helping those Ukrainians? So at first there was no medical coverage, but mm -hmm. fairly quickly that was rectified. Mm -hmm. So now Ukrainians have it. But basically any Ukrainian would show up at the border. Mm -hmm. um, the problem we have with our organization is, unlike other refugees where you know when people are arriving, because it, and often they arrive two years after you sponsor them, so there's a long and very bad waiting period, Ukrainians just show mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. So we don't know on Monday whether 10 people are going to show up or whether nobody's going to show up. So you can't prepare as well as you can for the other refugees, where we, we know what the flight number is, we can meet them at the flight, we can arrange an arrival meal, we can arrange temporary accommodation, all that sort of stuff. With the Ukrainians, they just show up, and most of the Ukrainians are supported by the Ukrainians who are here. Mm -hmm. So usually it's someone's sister or cousin mm -hmm. or whatnot. One other challenge with uh, the Ukrainians that are coming in, most of them are single mothers with mm -hmm. no father and uh, I mean, father stays in Ukraine and kids. And and our refugee program has four pillars. One pillar is people working, um, speaking English, some degree of integration, giving back. But the problem with working, it's really tough to say to, it, it's tough for a, a mother with three kids to go get a job and, and say, uh, uh, okay, so you, you're gonna support your family on, on a job, but you, you kind of have to be home with kids it, it, where you're sponsoring nuclear families. It's, it's a lot easier. Okay, so do you remember right now one or two or a couple of stories that really was hard to hear for you from Ukrainian newcomers? Well, one side benefit of what I've done with refugees, I've learned the secret to happiness, and that's to be grateful for what you have, mm -hmm. not ungrateful for what you've lost, and not ungrateful for what other people have. Wow. But all the stories, many of the stories, are heart-wrenching because people have died. These, these are like, uh, these are people's fathers and mothers and, and uh, children and cousins, and all of those are extremely par um, painful. Um, it, the, so the loss of life is the big one, but then there's injury and there's loss of houses, like uh, cities, like it, it's everything. just uh, everything. And people living in terror because, uh, you know, they can't drive. Like I, I'm upset that there's construction out here. Well, oh, that's an inconvenience for, like, big, big deal, you know. It takes me four more minutes to get downtown. The one thing I would love to ask you, so... Um, Speaking about the Ukrainian families and supporting them and hearing their stories, uh, like, of course, it, it changed, like, every immigrant story changed you as a person because, you know, because you are the person who feel this world different and would love to help as much as you can. So, um, what are you saying, like, you know, to inspire those families just to give them some words of support? What do you, what do you tell them when you see like tears in their eyes and they're so, you know, so sad and so frustrated. So what do you tell those families? It, it's a situation where you always wish you could fix it. You always wish you had those words which were perfect. But in reality, most of that you can do is listen. And I, I can't help that your brother died. You know, you, you can't, I can be sympathetic, so really we can do that. And then we do help look after the, the base needs to make sure that you've got a kitchen table and a, um, pots and pans and, and stuff like that. So definitely helping with that. At the same time, we are a little tough love. We're, we help people help themselves. So it's not our job to um, do everything for people. As a matter of fact, that's not healthy. It's just, I get it, you arrive here with a suitcase, you don't have any of the big stuff, so we help with the big stuff. А зараз ми знаходимося в банку меблів, який називається Circle Home. 
Це організація, яка абсолютно безкоштовно допомагає, в тому числі, українським новим прибулим отримати якісь перші речі, які вони потребують для своєї домівки. Тут ми бачимо, є меблі, є крісла, стільчики, є посуд, є телевізори, є все, що вам треба для того, аби облаштувати свій перший канадський дім. І тут навіть є картини, які можна повісити собі на стіну, для того, щоб ваш дім відчувався як справжній дім, а не просто орендована квартира. So, Jim, we are now at Furniture Bank, and it's really huge. From what I see, it's really huge. So, could you just tell me a little, what, uh, what is this place for, and how many Ukrainians use this place to set up their first home? So, we take uh, donations from the community of uh, lightly used furniture, housewares, pots, pans, dishes, um, and we're able to outfit um, everything a family needs with their furniture needs. Um, this is fully staffed by volunteers, so it's all a volunteer-run organization. Um, serves two purposes. One is outfitting families, the other is it diverts things from the landfill. It's a good reuse um, project. As far as the number of Ukrainians, I don't know the actual number. I would think it would be 40 or 50 families. That's my, uh, if I was just guessing, but I don't know that number for sure. The Ukrainian newcomer family could just come there, just, just take what they need for the first time, right? Yeah, yes. Now they need to fill in a form and say uh, how, who's in the family, what ages mm -hmm. are they, mm -hmm. and then they say we'd like a dresser, we'd like a couch, we'd like a dining room table, we, and so they fill in the form to say what they'd like, and this is all done by appointment. So it's, they, they set an appointment and then they come in and get, get their furniture. Okay, so how many days per week does this uh, bank work? Um, well, we're, we're by appointments mm -hmm. seven days a week, but we're, we have semi-regular hours, but we don't publicize it. We don't want people to show up because it, it has to be orchestrated, you know what I mean? And uh, so we're open about three days um, and evenings, Saturday morning, that type of thing. Okay, and are there a limit of any number of items one family could take? Um, we try to be fair and we actually have a wait list. So sometimes mm -hmm. if we're short on desks or something, then some people will wait for that. Um, but no, we outfit everything needed for the family. So if you have, uh, you know, mom and two kids, then you, you get uh, enough for whatever that is. Got it. And you mentioned a very interesting thing about these pictures on that wall. So could you please tell me the story? Because you told me if you enter a new house and you see pictures on a wall, it feels like home. That's right. So um, I love having artwork and people uh, can take the artwork and if they're not happy with it, they bring it back and exchange it. Um, but it, a home feels like a home if there's artwork. And, if, and the other thing we're doing is we're often just setting up their first home. So if they don't like the uh, couch or whatever, they can do what all Canadians do and go buy another couch. But of course, they need to work a while to do that. Ця організація і все, що роблять ці люди, є абсолютно волонтерським проєктом. Тут допомагають і працюють, і трудяться приблизно 800 людей, які присвячують свій час, свої зусилля тому, аби новоприбулі могли себе хоча б частково відчути вдома. Друзі, ще хотіла вам показати, що насправді всі ці меблі і все, що ми бачимо в цьому банку, виглядає дуже і дуже новим і в дуже пристойному стані. Тому українці, які користуються послугами цієї благодійної організації, відчувають себе дуже задоволеними. Ви лише подивіться, скільки тут таких дуже теплих, гарних речей, які мешканці міста Гелф абсолютно на волонтерських засадах приносять сюди, аби ці речі отримали друге життя, в тому числі в сім'ях українців. Історія підприємця Джима Естіла та його команди – одна з багатьох в Канаді про щире бажання допомогти та підтримати українців, в яких Росія забрала найцінніше – дім та майбутнє. Підприємець каже, що його приклад обов'язково надихне й інших канадців долучитися до благородної місії. Роксолана Бояк, Форум ТВ, Торонто.